Welcome to Kellis Coder. Today we're going to play with my PP Pico, a uh, Pi Pico, and the awesome fourth programming language. Motherfucker! So fourth is a really cool programming language. It is small, it is fast, and it has the words nip and tuck. And when you're as old as I am, you need a nip tuck. Ah. Uh, is that better? Now, Forth has been designed from the start to run on small, tiny hardware. And it's fast because it's one level up from assembly and just below C. And where C gives you enough rope to hang yourself and enjoy the erotic asphyxiation, Forth is basically playing with a nuke and blowing yourself. Is it just me or did anybody else notice that the camera never moves in these shots? I guess it's my special effects background that I go like, hey, the camera remains stationary. That is a miniature. Now, MicroPython on the other end is far from a miniature. It's 600 kilobytes. So it's considered huge. Now, four starts as small as one kilobyte up to this massive suppository of 167 kilobytes. We use Zepto 4 to actually lower the bar of entry for you Gen Z and millennial men bun wearing soy latte drinking micro penis soy boys. And because it is a lot more convenient because all the abstractions of the hardware are already there. So it programs a bit quicker. But usually you wouldn't like to do that with embedded software. Now I used Forf literally 30 years ago during my internship. I had to develop a module for an AWS, that's an automated weather system, that in our case ran on Antarctica. And my module would actually measure the height of the snow, because when the snow would get too close to, for example, the temperature sensors, that data would be skewed, so that data needed to be ignored. And the cool thing was, I wrote this in fourth in inline assembly. So I made a fourth word, a word is a function in inline assembly, and then attached it into the already existing scheduler. Because a lot of fourths already come with a cooperative multitasking system. That is brilliant, it makes it so easy. So I would measure my data, I would collect it in a table, and as soon as the satellite overhead uh, was in reach and the battery power was sufficient that data would be uploaded and we actually downloaded code from that same satellite as well for new extensions etc that is kind of cool it's a mindset that for now is normal you know updating on the fly back in the 80s and 90s it was a novel idea so today we're going to build a septic no zepto fourth from source that sounds like a suppository from Pfizer, right? Insert rectally three times a day and your hemorrhoids go away. Then we will flash it onto the Pi Zero. We connect the FTDI module to get to the interactive console. And we will explore the stack. We will explore reverse Polish notation. With a lot of vodka, it's going to be a lot of fun. So let's jump in and have a lot of fun. So we're now in the source directory of Septo 4 and we run a make clean because we want a clean suppository. And then we just run make. And it's done and we should have a UF2 file that we can then upload into the Pi Pico. There we go. Let's upload it to the Pi. Now you press the boot cell and you insert the USB. And then the Pi Pico will mount its file system. And we just copy the UF2 file with the fourth runtime onto that mounted file system and it will restart and we will have the fourth interpreter compiler running. Then we need to upload all the fourth words. We do that with code load 3.py in the utils directory and we point it to our microcontroller and setup underscore fool.fs. This installs every word that is available. Now I use this terminal emulator and I need to set it to no fourth so I created an alias to the e fourth com and change my crisp st to no fourth 
And that way I just type forth and I'm into the terminal. Now let's hook up the FTDI to the Pi. The TX goes to pin 1, the RX goes to pin 2, the ground goes to pin 3, and the VCC goes to the VSYS, uh, VSYS pin 39. And set it to 3.3 volts, otherwise you blow up your Pi. So now let's test this. Open the terminal and I type my alias fourth. That should start. Yes, there we go. Words, these are all the words that we just uploaded. That looks good. It's a big, big build. Now let's add two things on the stack, a one and a two. And then the third thing we add is a word called plus. So one space two space plus. And this will actually add them together. If we press the dot, we remove what is on the stack and we show it on the screen. The stack underflow means that there is nothing on the stack. Let's write a word at all to add all the integers on the stack together. So we use depth. Depth is a word that gives back the amount of items on the stack. One, do and loop. So basically this is a for loop. One, two, depth, do, plus. So if we add the three things on the stack and we call add all, there we go. It adds them together and we can do it on a single line as well. For fourth, that doesn't matter. Dot s, that it prints the stack without removing it. Yeah, this looks fine. It's working perfectly. Let's test the GPIO words. Let import, that imports the LED library. On green, so green on, LED, exclamation mark means that it's a variable that we set. And off green, yeah, that works. So let's make the obligatory blinky. So we first need to import the LED words, let import, and then we create a word. Everything starting with a colon and a space, that defines a word, and a word is just a function. And you can create functions on new lines like I did here, and begin is basically the beginning of a loop. And then we say, put green on the stack and toggle that LED, and 300 ms means 300 millisecond sleep. Key question mark means if a key is pressed, then true. So basically, as long as the key is not pressed, we loop. And let's blink it, and there we go. Let's up the ante and make a variable blinking speed. So again, we import the LED, we create a new word, colon, space, and the random word. And this is new, a bracket space, n dash dash basically is a comment it tells us it has one argument on the stack and it is being removed the dash dash and now we're going to make a real comment backslash space and then your comment it's a good practice to use this uh, stack explanation the bracket and the comment and then again we do a begin and now we need to copy this value because as soon as we run uh, toggle, it will be actually removed from the stack. So dub, and then we just do the green uh, LED toggle. Right, and we can now just call ms, because the dub is duplicated on the stack. Dub duplicates the first value or the top value on the stack. Again, we wait for a key pressed, and until that happens, we just loop. So again, 300 milliseconds, blink, Now usually you would not put this on a single line because it gets confusing as you can see. So let's rewrite it the way that you would usually write it. So again we will override the word. Good practice to use this comment with the stack notation and the real comment what your function does. Really makes it legible. And then we put begin on the line. Oh, I made an error. Like I said, it's important to have a space behind a slash, because slash is also a word. And then we put begin on its own line. We can indent it. Dub, that's very important in this case. Then we put the function that actually toggles the LED on its own line, and here the millisecond wait. So now it's very clear that the MS 
take something from the stack. So this is the way that we would usually write this. And it really behaves the same way. Now you can actually see which code is generated in your word by just typing the C keyword. That is a standard word, just like words is on every fourth. And this is the assembly that is created on the fly. So it's really small, it's really wickedly fast, something that MicroPython will never be able to do this way. So there you have it. We compiled septic Zepto fourth from source, we flash it to the Pi Pico, we attach an FTDI interface that powers the Pi Pico and grants us access to the interactive fourth console and we explored reverse Polish notation on stack and other little things. So yeah, in the next video we will actually explore more about fourth. I have an idea of a system that I'm going to develop and I'm actually curious whether fourth is the right way to go forth, forward. Uh, because I really like that interactive nature which could come in handy. So I also need to brush up on my uh, skills and learn a lot more about the Pi Pico, which I think is an awesome controller. And it's kind of ironic that MicroPython, being 600 kilobytes in size, runs on a microcontroller. <laughs> I mean, for us Gen Xers, this is as close to a supercomputer as we would have gotten. It's, it's incredible. So I hope you learned something and I hope to see you in the next one when we go forth a bit deeper.